Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. Now we've seen in the past couple of videos uh, different ways and different techniques for creating UI5 applications that utilize OData v2 services, but they've all been read operations. And while that's probably the majority of the use cases out there and, and usage patterns, you have a lot of reporting and analytics scenarios with HANA, of course, those are going to be read, where we display a lot of the data in table controls, as we've seen. Um, that's certainly not the limit to the possibilities. We can have full transactional applications. We can certainly create data, update de data, delete data. OData supports it. Um, and SAP UI 5 has some nice functionality to support uh, these uh, transactional scenarios as well. So let's, in this video, let's uh, take what we've already learned about uh, OData consumption in UI5 using OData models, and let's see how we can take it into um, data create and update scenarios as well. All right, so let's return to the web IDE. And what we want to do is uh, we're going to take the structure of our overall application, our OData basic, uh, from our previous exercise, and we're going to use that as our starting point. So let's just copy the whole folder structure, OData Basic, and um, we'll paste it here. And we're going to call this one OData CRUD for Create, Read, Update, Delete. Data CRUD. All right. And basically, most of the logic for startup, initialization, configuration, the component JS, index, uh, HTML, uh, that's all the same. Uh, the main thing we want to do here is in our manifest JSON, we want to point to a different OData service. So our business partner data, um, that's not what we want to update in, in this particular application. We want to change this to our user.xso data. Because if you remember, our user XSO data, if we go all the way back here, oh, sorry, wrong folder. If we go to XSJS and we go to the uh, XSO data and we look at user XSO data, this is also the O data service that had a create exit and then had an XSJS um, exit handler on there to uh, to handle the creation and although we tested that earlier using postman now we're going to build a user interface that's going to allow us to test it as well so that'd be nice to be able to uh, to loop back and test that particular service uh, everything else here is the same odata odata v2 um, let's uh, let's change the name here though let's call this uh, Calling it BP service doesn't make sense anymore. Let's call it user service. There we are. So we'll save that. And of course, we need to come down here to our models and we need to adjust this as well. So we want to call this user model. And of course, this is user service now as well. It's still OData v2. Uh, we still want to preload it. Our settings, we're going to use batch false still. JSON is still true, default binding two-way, and default method put. So all that has uh, has stayed the same. Um, I actually do have a, uh, a code snippet for this, but uh, since we're making so few changes, uh, I wanted to point those out. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and just make sure that everything is... Uh, I didn't miss anything here, like, uh, and grab the code snippet and just double check things. Yeah, that looks good. All the same, let's save it. Now, um, so the view here, we're going to want to change it over. Uh, our original view with just the table control, that's not going to, that's not going to be, uh, that's going to be good enough. Um, let's go over, I've got a complete view implementation ready for us in the code snippets. You can see it's uh, considerably larger now because we're going to need some input fields as well. Let me save that. 
and uh, we can have a look at it in the uh, layout editor. And what we see here is we want uh, now we want some input uh, fields for the first name, the last name, and the email. And then we're going to have a button here that's going to allow us uh, when we press it to create the record in the, in the database. Uh, here we're going to list all the users. And so it'll still be a table control uh, like we had previously. We predefine the columns. This is the other thing that we could do. In our previous example, we, we defined the columns programmatically in the controller uh, in initialization, and then we did it dynamically by reading the metadata. This, this is a third option. We can defy, define them statically at design time within the view XML itself. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. I know I know I have uh, I, I know my interface is fixed. I know what the service I'm working with here, uh, and so I'm going to uh, to define these uh, four columns uh, in my uh, table already here. Um, and you know what we're also going to allow is we're going to allow the data in our table to be updatable. So if I change uh, some of the data in the table and I press this button to update the changes, uh, we want to send those changes back to the server as well. So we'll have both create and, and update operations here. And to do that, that, that's the other part of the reason where I, why I define these columns um, in, the, in the XML is because I also wanted to change the, um, the column type here uh, to really allow for uh, input fields. So that's what that's what you see here. I want, didn't want my table to be display only. I wanted them to be input fields. Uh, so I needed to define them here in the XML. Or at least it made it easier uh, if I define it here in the XML. Now, a lot of what we're going to do is actually here in the, um, in the app controller. Because we're going to need more event handlers than what we've had in the past, obviously. Um, so what we want is... Um, so we can keep the the basic structure here, our base controller, our JSON model. That that all stays the same. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to clear out our on and it, um, and uh, we can still have the uh, the logout button. That's okay. But we're going to need some new event handlers for those other buttons. So call user service function. Are a call user service and a call user update. So one for create, one for update. And uh, yeah, that should uh, that should do the trick. So we'll save that. And uh, so what we have in our on init, we have a very similar. Um, scenario to what we had before. I suppose I could have largely kept it there if I wanted. Um, and actually, I don't have a code snippet for this, but uh, I'm going to be lazy. I don't want to type the code. Um, so I have it here in the document. I'm going to break my own rules just a little bit here. I think I actually did recently add a code snippet for this one because uh, it was a little bit, it was a little a little bigger than what I wanted people to type, um, but my document that I'm working from on my other screen doesn't have it. So there we are. Um, not dissimilar to what we had before, basically setting up our model, uh, getting our connection to our model, binding it into the table. Um, so uh, really no difference from the, from the previous uh, examples except the difference in the names here. Uh, the other thing that we did is uh, we do have a... Uh, uh, you know, we have input fields in the screen, so uh, they'll be bound to the default model, which is just our empty JSON model. Okay. Now we get to the more interesting parts, which is how we're going to call the, the user uh, create function and an update function. Um, so we do have code snippets for those. Let's go get the code snippet here for the create operation. I think what you're going to see here, this is pretty easy stuff because um, we're not having to build the HTTP request. We're not having to call JSON. Um, all we really have to do is um, 
is on create, we're going to get the data out of the screen. So we're going to get access to the model that is bound to the view. So our default model, that's going to get us our current values. Um, and we can get it back in JSON here with the get data command. And then we're going to build a new JSON entity here for what we want to pass into the uh, to the service call. So we're basically going to get the first name, last name, and email out of the, out of the screen. We're not going to get a user ID that's going to be assigned dynamically on the server. But to fulfill the OData service, we need to pass in at least a dummy value. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, do have to set the headers on the um, on the model. Uh, to make sure that you know, it's it knows that we're sending JSON back once again because we only support JSON, uh, but Atom XML is the is the default in OData v2, so uh, it's, it'd be good and avoid any problems. Go ahead and set it and tell it that it's going to be JSON, and then uh, finally um, uh, some parameters we're going to pass in basically just uh, success and error handling uh, callbacks. If it's success, we're just going to pop up a message that success. If it's uh, in error, then we're going to go to a dedicated error handler. And then on the OData model itself, there is a create function. So we're just going to call that. We're going to say OData, create a new record. We're going to tell it what entity um, in the uh, OData service. We're going to pass it the data that we want it to, to create. And we're going to pass in these parameters. And the OData model the SAP UI5 OData model takes care of the rest for us. You know, it creates the request object, it handles the the response, um, and, and uh, really does a does a nice job uh, of doing a lot of work for us. Okay, and likewise, the update is equally pretty simple. So we'll come here and we'll get the code for that, and then we'll have a look at it. So uh, similarly, what we want to do is we want to get access to the user model that is bound to our table. Uh, we're going to set our headers once again to tell it that it's JSON. I already explained why we have to do that. And then we're going to attach error handlers and success handlers. Then all we really have to do is say submit changes. Um, the table control binding to the OData model is going to automatically swap any change data into the model because we we said it if you remember back in the manifest we said that our model is two-way binding which means when changes happen in the OData service they're automatically reflected in bound UI controls and vice versa somebody changes the data via the control it's automatically represented in the uh, model so we don't have to like extract act out the JSON from the model and send it um, send it into the service or anything like that. We just tell it, hey, whatever changes you've seen so far, send them to the server. Uh, so this keeps things real simple. Um, really, if we didn't want to have nice uh, uh, handlers here for success and error, and if we didn't have to set the JSON, this would be like two lines of code to get access to the model and then tell the model to submit changes. Um, I don't know how much simpler this uh, this could be here. Um, last thing we want to do is uh, we want to handle the errors. And I think I got a pretty good error handler here already. I do have a code snippet prepared for this and uh, just to make sure I don't screw something up. I'm going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the snippet of the error handler. I think these are the same from our earlier example, but um, I don't know. Better, better safe than sorry. Let's, yeah, it looks like it was, uh, it, it was pretty much the same there, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just make sure. So now we want to go ahead and uh, run the service. And what we're going to see here. Uh, oh, I didn't change my configuration, my run configuration. So it ran my old application. Sorry about that. Let's change our run configuration to point to our new application. There we go. So what we see here, we see the 12 uh, records that already exist. This isn't actually business partners. I should have went and changed that uh, that description when we copied um, from one application to another. I didn't change the the, the text description here. So it still says business partner list. Um, I tell you what, that's bothering me. <laughs> so let's uh, let's change that. Where 
we have business partner list. Let's say um, user list. So I feel better now. There we are. Now it says user list. Um, we have the records displayed here that um, that are already coming from our table. Let's come here and create a new record. So let's say group zero zero last name test, and we have to give it a valid email address, uh, just something with a valid format, test.scp.com. And if I say create record, created successfully, and it got added to the table, that's the other thing with the automatic two-way binding. As soon as the data is updated on the server side, we get a refresh of it, and we immediately see it in our user interface. We didn't even have to add lines of code to do that. And if we would come back here and actually look at our XSJS script, and look at the uh, look at the logs here. Uh, if we bring up the whole log and scroll down, um, what you'll see here. Uh, I lost my mouse. There we are. Is uh, you can see the call to our user XSO data. Um, we can see the data that was sent in because we're logging that in the exit handler. So we know that our exit handler fired. Um, and um, and then the, the results are updated into the screen. So that's good. Um, we can test uh, an invalid email address. So we say create record. Then we get the email, the custom error that was in our, our exit handler. If you remember all the way back to our XSJS and our user XSO data, this user create method. Um, if we then go over here to user create method, we're validating the email and we throw this uh, error message, invalid email for no way email must be valid. So that's coming up out of our exit handler, but that's being thrown through the OData service, that's what's being returned by the XS OData service. The OData model is trapping that error message, um, passing it along to our error handler in our controller, and then we're outputting it to, to the screen. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, last thing I want to show you is obviously updating data. So we'll test our other example here. So we'll take record number one. We'll say, instead of first name test, we'll just say update. And we'll say update changes. And um, just to prove to you that that did update, if I refresh the page, I now see that data being persisted. Uh, well, we could even, um, if you want to trust me, uh, if you don't want to trust me, uh, we can even come here to the database. And we'll look at the, that table, user, user data. data for it and we'll see that record number one um, user ID number one has been updated even within the database so with those essentially two lines of code um, we've got the ability to um, to bind the data back to the to the control which sends it through the OData model back into the database so I think that's uh, that's a pretty nice example not a whole lot of code uh, but a whole lot of functionality. And that's part of the beauty of utilizing OData services. They're handled so well on the client side. The OData model is so nicely integrated with the UI controls, the whole binding concept. It means we can focus on writing business logic and, and not having to worry about a lot of communication, formatting, boilerplate code uh, for actually calling services.